So I don't really have a lot of access to video editing tools. I have a, a Chromebook not a lot of video editing opportunities and also I don't want to get like I don't want to touch copyright stuff like at all so I will not have examples of the musical scores within the video but I will link below each one so you can just like click it and take a listen for yourself and you make your own judgment about them <laughs> Sorted. It's a girl, Anita. I got bangs. This is the first video I'm taking with my bangs, and I'm very proud of myself. I'm turning more into a soccer mom every day. Now I just have to find a child and make them play soccer, and then I'm good. So today we're gonna talk about my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I think that is my favorite <laughs> movies. I love everything in movies, like behind the scenes, the DVD ROM features, audio commentary, but there's that song, it's like you're never fully dressed without a smile. I think the same applies to movies and you're, you're never truly a good movie until you have a kick butt score. And like, I'm not gonna really be talking about movie musicals right now because like, like songs with lyrics are a whole nother ballpark. I'm talking about the scores, the instrumentals, you know, the John Williams. He he is like, I don't know, a god among men. <laughs> like everything he touches is iconic. So we're not gonna talk about him because this video is movies that you wouldn't think would have a good score, but they do, all right? And obviously it's not every case of this. Uh, these are just movies that I've seen in recent history. Some of them I actually haven't seen in recent history. I've just been listening to their soundtracks because they're so freaking good. Let's dive in. First off the bat is gonna be Jonah, a VeggieTales movie. If you don't even know what VeggieTales is, that's okay. It's this Christian vegetable series. They're good though. I love, I grew up with them. So good. And they made a full length feature film that was out in theaters uh, in 2002 called Jonah and the scores are by Kurt Heineke. Kurt Heineke also did all the music for like just the show like episodes of VeggieTales. So this isn't his first ballpark. That's not even ball game? Rodeo. <laughs> yeah. This isn't his first rodeo. And the score, it's it's whimsical. It it's it's based off of a biblical story, so it's very Middle Eastern. There's this one scene where they go into the town of Nineveh. It's supposed to be the bad guys, but it's just so, oh, there's like the men's choir and it's just very big and grand. And um, part of the Jonah VeggieTales movie has these characters called the Pirates Don't Do Anything. And they're, they're like comedic relief and they have a song from years past and it's a funny song, but in the VeggieTales movie for the orchestral score, they kind of, Kurt Heineke said in an interview thing, like, he took some elements from Indiana Jones, which I could see, I could see that. And so, it's just this big, grandiose, and there's also this whole underlying um, theme throughout this movie about, um, and it's taken from an ancient hymn about God's mercy or something. I can't read. <laughs> So the next one on our list is Baby's Day Out. And if you don't know what that movie is, that's fine. Because you don't need to know. It's on Netflix though. But I grew up with that movie. Uh, it's, it's painful. Lots of slapstick humor. It's Italian. It has the guy who plays Rossi, Joe Mantegna. Mantegna. And it's painfully Italian. So I was a little like, oh, there's not a lot of Italian-esque elements in the score. But it's fine. Because the score is beautiful. It's by Bruce Broughton? Broughton? It was written in three weeks, all right? I can't even like count that high. And um, <laughs> I don't know, just the opening, because it's about a baby, but then it's about these three baddies who like kidnap it for ransom, but then the baby goes like loose all over the town. It's, it's a wild ride, 90s. Um, 
And it starts out with this cute, like, kind of lullaby-ish thing with a really sweet clarinet. And then it gets to the bad guys theme. And then just, I think this is like my first introduction to a really good movie score. It's, it's just great. And it kind of doesn't need to be, which is why I love it. So that's always the the next one is for this movie, it's called Wild. I've only watched it for the first time in the past month. It's about, this. it's a story of Oscar Wilde. And it, it's, it had a pretty big budget, the movie, but it was not, it did not do that well in the box office. But I watched, it's a period piece, I love it, it was so good. It starts Stephen, stars Stephen Fry and the score it was written by Debbie Wiseman. Yes, Wise Woman. No, but, and so like, usually movie scores aren't written by women, so that's really cool. I saw in a review that they're like, oh, it's so trite and melodramatic. I'm like, well, that's exactly what I like. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, and I agree. In some parts of the movie, the score really doesn't work well with what's going on the screen. But that's fine because it's gorgeous anyway, and I will just like listen to it and I will cry, and it's it's beautiful. Now the last and most surprising out of this whole bunch, I don't even know how I started listening to the score of this movie because I haven't seen this movie in years. Mega Mind. Do you remember that DreamWorks Mega Mind? He has the met like the DreamWorks face. Will Ferrell. That's yeah. You would not think that that movie would have a good score. But holy cow, it's... But when you hear who wrote it, you won't be surprised. It's Hans Zimmer, Pirates of the Caribbean, Prince of Egypt, bada bing, bada boom, whole bunch of other junk. Like, he's also iconic. Like, I think, I love John Williams. No shade to him, but a lot of his, it's, it's iconic what the music he writes, but it's kind of not tame, but you kind of know what to expect. Hans Zimmer, I feel, especially in the Megamind soundtrack, there are just some instances with these low reeds that I'm like, ah, and I've recently been playing a low reed instrument, so I'm like, ah, it's so good, and he just uses all these different elements, and because it's kind of about an alien, he uses some like alien type sounds, and it's just, it's so groovy, it's so funky, it's great, I'm, yeah, I'll just listen to the Mega Mind soundtrack all and like, like Mega Mind. <laughs> but yeah, so those were four movies where the score surprised me in a good way. Now here's the one. That's my index finger. That it surprised me in a bad way. So this Christmas, my brothers decided to give me Shrek, the third. For Christmas. I had not seen that movie since I was like an infant. I watched it again and it bugged me. I could not detect a single piece of original like score throughout the whole movie. All like every single like instrumental background music was totally it, totally taken from the previous two movies which the score is great but it's just so lazy. And then there's one scene where Prince Charming is like giving this whole big thing. And he's like, ha on the stage. I don't even know. They, this is, okay. If you're doing like a student film, if you have a TV show, like no one expects you to write these instruments. Well, the four movies I mentioned before, nobody would have expected them to have good music, but they did. Some written in three weeks. They use Danse Macabre. I don't know how to pronounce it, right? I'm not Swedish. Camille St. Sainz is not Swedish, but you get the gist. They use Danse Macabre. I don't know if you've ever, you've probably heard of it. Um, the music's linked down below. In a falling feature film that you're making the big bucks off of, this year you're using iconic characters and stuff. And you use stock music, like, it's just so lazy. And the thing that gets me the most, I'm more upset about this than I really should be, whatever. The only piece of original music that I noticed in that movie 
was a marching band version of Smash Mouth's All Star. Which, it's, I mean, I think that was the saving grace. It's beautiful. I, I cried a little bit when I heard it. I don't know. I just, it, it bugged me because I'm like, come on! Like, <sighs> yeah, like I love Dancing My Cop. Like, that's such a good piece, but just to just. Oh, we don't know what else to write for music. We'll just stick it in there, like. So yeah, I don't know how to write music. It's it looks hard. <laughs> like like I'm like oh I probably could like transpose this piece of pop music into like a marching band thing, but then I'm like oh there's so many different parts. So it's probably super hard, and I get that. But like the previous four, like oh it's so cool that they were able to put these great pieces of music in otherwise atrocious or just odd films except wild wild was really good and john i really like that like it's just they didn't need to be there but they were and that was a gift shrek the third you can go eat a booger no so yeah that's that's just me these are obviously not the only instances of like surprising music scores if you feel inclined to do so leave a comment with what you think is interesting and write a piece of music yourself see what happens maybe it's the next Indiana Jones theme Star Wars okay quick aside I love John Williams but I don't know I watched like the terminal and catch me if you can back to back which are both Steven Spielberg yeah they're both Steven Spielberg they both have they both have Tom Hanks are they both Steven Spielberg I think so, I'm pretty sure. They both have Tom Hanks and the, both their scores are written by John Williams and they both take place with airplanes. They're both beautiful scores, but they are very similar in some parts. So like, John, I love you, but like, you don't have to do everything. <laughs> but I appreciate it still. 